Here at the Harkwell Center for Neuromodulation, we are looking at promoting a care pathway for people with difficult to treat uh, psychiatric neurological disorders. Uh, the care pathway spans a number of options from uh, what we would consider more non-invasive to surgically invasive options. Um, these can include uh, TMS or magnetic stimulation of the brain. We have electroconvulsive therapy, we have uh, ketamine treatments, then we have deep brain stimulation and focused ultrasound. At the Harkwell Center, uh, we have several key pillars that advance our mission. The first is going to be excellent guideline concordant care for patients with treatment refractory disease. So that spans the spectrum from depression to obsessive compulsive disorder, other conditions where there may be effective treatments, but some patients still remain quite disabled by, by their condition. The second pillar is gonna be research, and it's gonna be advancing the next generation of therapeutics. And that can be non-invasive to invasive means of accessing these circuits in the brain that we know are not functioning well in patients with treatment refractory refractory disease and how can we safely and effectively influence those circuits to develop future therapies. And the final pillar is really education. It's educating the next generation of clinicians, of imaging technologists and others who are going to advance this field uh, for, for years to come. Deep brain stimulation involves the implantation of electrodes into the brain to provide continuous stimulation. It is a, an improved treatment for certain neurological conditions and here at the Harkwell Center we're trying to expand the envelope to include psychiatric conditions which we know have uh, biological bases in, in the brain. So some of the Canadian first and uh, international first studies we've done have included a study looking at deep brain stimulation for severe alcohol use disorder. Another one which was published last year was looking at deep brain stimulation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Since we're looking at this as part of a care pathway, what we'd like to do is to uh, introduce people to different parts of the care pathway and then move them forward to get to their best outcome. So with that, we're, we're trying to help um, those individuals with the hardest to treat forms of psychiatric illness to improve their lives and prolong their, their lives. Here at the Centre, um, I'm involved with a spectrum of different types of neuromodulation procedures and research. Uh, so my research involves uh, non-invasive types of brain stimulation, uh, different types of ketamine uh, and neuromodulation-based uh, medication treatments. Additionally, I also am involved with minimally invasive neurosurgical procedures for treatment-resistant uh, depression and OCD. We're employing novel technologies such as TMS uh, in an MRI machine, so concurrent TMS fMRI, to better explore uh, a patient's ability to undergo plasticity or plastic change in their brain. Um, we'll also be able to employ these as potential biomarkers for the future to predict who will go on to respond to treatments and who will not. Um, and that will allow us to better triage which sorts of treatments a patient may be more appropriate for and respond to. Additionally, from our other types of studies involving minimally invasive neurosurgical procedures, uh, we found that about 50% of the individuals that we've treated uh, for OCD have demonstrated uh, a response to that treatment on clinical scales uh, from uh, novel types of brain um, surgeries, including focused ultrasound. The patient feedback has been exceptionally positive. The patients that we see have tried other treatments. So when we think about patients who have treatment resistant depression or OCD, they've been through psychotherapy, they've been through uh, different types of medication. And so when we have the opportunity to offer them other treatments, many of them are happy to, to try these out even if they're not successful. And because we have so many different interventions, they're able to try many different types and ultimately uh, find one that's effective. We've heard many positive responses from our patients. Many of the patients that we see are quite ill. Many of them have not had jobs. Many of them have not left their house in many years. Many of them have not had uh, solid relationships. And after treatment, patients report improvements in all aspects of their lives. They're able to leave their homes. Some of our patients have gone back to school. Some of our patients have reported improved relationships with their family and friends. So we're really changing people's lives with our treatments. For us, what uh, really drives us is 
uh, really the relentless pursuit to, to develop safe and effective treatments for our patients. These are some of the most disabling diseases that there are. These are incredibly challenging, they're debilitating. So I think it's critical and it's incumbent upon us to not only try to deliver the best evidence-informed care for these patients, but to develop a next generation of therapeutics. And that's something that is essential to our mission.